we've all been, um, I guess we can say victimized by either our own words or somebody else's words about us. We've all been victimized some way or somehow. Shut up, you're no good, you're lazy, you're stupid, you'll never make it. What's wrong with you? You're too old, you're too young. No one wants you, no one cares about you, you're ugly. Why can't you be like your brother <laughs> or your sister? Uh, you're crazy, you're fat, you're skinny, give up. God doesn't care about you, you'll never change, you'll never make it. You're just like your father or your grandfather. How many has ever heard anything like that in any of those things that I just said? Look, look around the room and look at how many hands you see raised. Unbelievable. The tongue. Tongue on fire. I read this phrase this week and it was so startling to me that I'm going to develop a whole series of thoughts around this. It's called Fallen Condition Focus. You ought to mark that down. It's one of the most powerful things I've read recently. Fallen Condition Focus. Can I explain what that means? It means that people focus on their condition after salvation like they were before salvation. In other words, they never change their attitude, never change their mind, never change their perspective, never change their ideas, their focus, their way they talk, the way they do things. It always hinges back to their fallen condition and not their new condition in Christ. Wow. Fallen condition focus. Say that out loud with me. You guys need to develop this in your counseling program. What you guys do. Fallen condition focus. It is something that has hurt the body of Christ for many, many years because, as I've said it and I told the people Thursday night, I'll say it every single time I preach if I have to, people still try to operate in the new life by living the thoughts of the old life. You cannot survive in this world by having an unrenewed mind. You can't do it. You will fall prey to every damnable thing the enemy puts at your feet. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just going to happen. And how do I know that? Because over all these years of ministry, I have watched more people fall into sin, fall back into the things of the world because they never took the time to renew their mind to the Word of God. Fallen condition focus. That's why we say the ugly, dumb things that come out of our mouths. That's why we respond to one another with animus and hatred and, 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 and all the things that we do. It's because we are still, we're born again. We're going to go to heaven. Amen. That's the thing that gets a lot of people really mad. I mean, you think they're going to heaven? Stop trying to think who you want to put in heaven because it's not your business. <laughs> it's not your business. <laughs> you know. Well, I think she's saved. You don't know anything about somebody on the inside. You don't use what you see is what you perceive the person is. But the reality is you don't really know them. Right. Only God knows them. Yeah. I believe you're going to live next door to some people in heaven that you never thought were going to be there. And guess what? They're going to live next door to you and think you shouldn't be there. Stop our judging, huh? I don't know if you were here the night that I spoke about how when we grew up in the, the old Pentecostal church, and we were convinced. In fact, I'll never forget the day I told the people that one of the older women of the church, she came to me and she says, oh, we need to pray for Billy Graham. And I looked at her in, in, my, in my, you know, I'm just a young man. And then my, my thinking, I mean, Billy Graham, he's not baptizing the Holy Ghost. We need to pray for him that he gets saved. I said that to her. Imagine a little puny thing like me that went behind the ears telling this woman he needs to get saved because 
it, the church I grew up in, we believed that you weren't saved unless you spoke in tongues. And that is not a Bible doctrine. It is a damnable doctrine that the, the devil has put into the world today that doesn't make any sense. You're not saved because you speak in tongues. And, uh, you, you need, can, can I get a little personal here? I know some people that speak in tongues that aren't saved. You better say amen or owe me right now. I heard someone say one day, the devil can't speak in tongues. You haven't been around some devil people like I have. Anybody can make up gibberish, and when you're around somebody, you can tell what's right and what's wrong, what's God and what's not God. I could tell you stories about that, but I'll leave them for another day. But the point is that we have to come to the point in our lives where we stop trying to get everybody else to be perfect like us. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> tell somebody next to you what a joke that is, <laughs> trying to get everybody to be perfect like us. <laughs> joke, big joke. Perfect like us. Did you look in the mirror this morning when you got up? You didn't see anybody perfect. The only perfection you saw was that God saw in you the righteousness that was on the inside, but the rest of you is all troubled and trying to catch up with what your spirit man is. Your mind, your body is trying to catch up with what God did on the inside of you. Oh, come on, say amen. Your righteousness is not in the acts that you do. It's in the condition God has placed on the inside of you. You're righteous because God has declared you righteous, not because you do everything 100% right every day. Now, I'm telling you, the more you're saved, the better your life will become, and the less you'll do that's wrong. You're still doing the same old things you did 20 years ago now after you saved 20 years. It's a problem. We got to stop this foolishness of calling people names and, 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 and being, because words are very powerful. Amen. I want you to tap two people next to you and say, words are very powerful. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Tell somebody next to you, be careful what you say. I read an interesting little story. I think it's worth to me to repeat to you. This is a story of a woman in an Indian village who maliciously gossiped about another lady and her family in the village. One day she found out that she was wrong about this lady and her family and had a change of heart. So she went to the village's wise men and asked how she could take back all the wrong that she had done. The wise man told her to go home kill her chickens, pluck their feathers out, and put them into a bag. After this, she was to go back and see the wise man again, but on her way back, she was to scatter all the feathers she had plucked from all the chickens. The lady did as she was told. When she got back to the man, he told her, now go back and pick up all the feathers that you've scattered. The woman was astonished at such a command and said, by now, the wind has carried the feathers throughout the village and beyond. The wise man then told her, and so it was with your careless words. They're like feathers scattered in the wind. You cannot retrieve them. With that, the woman with a broken heart because of the words she had spoken went her way and determined from that day forward to watch every word that came out of her mouth. Go back and pick up the scattered feathers. How many is married in the room? Was that an affirmative or a negative? There are two words that changed your life. I do. or in some ceremonies, I will. Change your life. There's a lot of people in prison today that one word changed their life, guilty. 
One word. Two words. There are some of you that are in this room right now that grew up when you were told you are a mistake. You were unplanned. In God's eyes, you are never unplanned. <laughs> there are no mistakes in God. You're exactly who God made you to be. The powerful language of Proverbs says over and over again things about the tongue. For example, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 29 and 30, let no corrupt communication or unwholesome language proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister, what? Grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That scripture verse for years has been taken out of its original context. It's just not, you know, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It's very simple when you read the context. The context says, when you sin with your mouth and say the wrong things, that's what grieves the Holy Spirit. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only say those things that build people up, that minister what? Grace. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. And minister what? Grace. In other words, favor, blessing, provision, Safety, protection, healing, health, strength, deliverance, Amen. joy, peace. Hallelujah. Say those things. Yes. Well, you're not supposed to lie. How can I tell somebody they look good when they're ugly? <laughs> oh, come on. Give me a break. You, you, you don't have to talk about their looks. You say, you know what? You're a very intelligent person. Because intelligence has nothing to do with pretty or ugly. Yeah. I can tell you a few men that I know that married pretty women. And I think you can finish the sentence. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with it. See, and the, and the body of Christ over the years has been judgmental, critical, and has that animus in it that you, you always want to put somebody else down so that you can look higher than them. But here's the reality. You're higher than them if they're 10% and you're 20%. But the 20% is not your goal. It's to be 100% for Jesus. Come on, help me a little bit. I want us to understand the principle that I'm giving you today about this tongue. That God wants us to say those things that not only edify others, but edify us as well. Because when you say good things about others, good things come back about you. Are you with me today? If you are, say amen. So don't, don't say things that scatter the feathers because it's impossible to go back and pick them up. You start making some crazy statements about people, say, oh, yeah, that woman over there, I know she's saved, but, man, how many times she'd been married? Why don't you tell that to Jesus? Because he didn't have a problem with a woman married five times who was living with somebody now, communicating. And we, 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 we've isolated people in the body of Christ. We don't want to talk with them, communicate with them, you know, have anything to do with them. And Jesus wasn't ashamed or afraid to talk to anybody. Wow. Something really hit me this week, and here's why I want to, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this, but let, let me just show you this. I want you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 4. I don't think that I have ever seen this in this, in this context. I, I honestly don't think I've ever seen it. I've seen it. I've preached about it. You've preached about it. You know it. You know it. I, I know you know it. But here, it, it just, it just, it came out of this page like a Muhammad Ali right hook. 
unbelievable how God opened your eyes to things that seem mundane and less important to others, how God will reveal things to you. Watch this. Jesus now has, has weathered through the temptation of Satan. And the Bible says in verse 17, Matthew chapter 4, from that time he began to preach to say, repent or change your mind for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers or fishermen. And he said unto them, here's the key verse. I want you to underline it in your Bible, or if you have an iPad, then just make, put it in red or however you do it. I want you to get this. This is what he says. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Here is what came out of that page and that verse to me that I want to share with you this morning. First of all, one word out of the mouth of Jesus, and your life is about to radically change. 